Hey, you're listening to Shaun of the South Live, and that music you can hear behind me are the high beams. The high beams, everybody. Well, it ain't no pose. Drunk, but stand, don't sit flat footed. Flat footed, yeah, yeah, yeah. You better keep your drink near. Flat footed with a beer. Heavy hair in back and a pint in front. It's a bouncing act, the young man's done. Say, Captain, always goes down with a ship. A man and his beer are hard to tip. Flat footed. Flat footed, yeah, yeah, yeah. There ain't no spilling here, flat footed with a beer. Got into Montgomery, Alabama late at night. My wife was driving. We'd come from further north. We'd been in the car six hours all day. I was sleepy because I'd just woken up. I'd fallen asleep in the passenger seat. My hair was a mess, and my beard was disheveled, and there were bags underneath my eyes. I looked like I had just crawled out from under a rock. I walked into the hotel lobby, and I realized that I was not wearing any shoes. It was, it was late, and I was tired. I looked like a moron. The clerk behind the counter looked at me. She said, may I help you, sir? And I said, I have a room here, and I gave her my credentials. She checked me in, and I asked for a luggage cart. She said, let me go check. She walked to the back. She was gone for some time. She came back out and said, it appears that we don't have any luggage carts. They're all they're all being used. It's a busy, busy week here. We've got the choral competitions from all over the state of Alabama. But I do have one of these, and she rolled out a shopping cart. Your typical shopping cart that you would use to roll through the aisles of a Winn-Dixie. I thanked her, and I walked through the lobby pushing my shopping cart. I went out to our, our car, and I unloaded all of our luggage. The shopping cart actually ended up working out for us because wherever we go, for whatever occasion, we like to carry every blasted thing we own. <laughs> My wife, you should see her when we leave town for a hurricane. Once we left for a hurricane and we carried our refrigerator on the roof of our car along with a queen mattress and anything else that she could think to shove in the back. We also had my mother-in-law with us. That was quite a trip. 
If you've never gone through a hurricane evacuation with your mother-in-law, just pretend that everything you own is traveling down Highway 10 at a slow clip of maybe 10 miles an hour, and one of you has a teacup-sized bladder <laughs> that is about to explode, and it's not you or your wife. We pulled over in a field during that hurricane evacuation, and I marched my mother-in-law up behind a live oak tree. She squatted onto her heels and said, plug your ears. So I plugged my ears, and I sang Amazing Grace to myself. <laughs> she made water behind that tree. Once the shopping cart was filled with our things, I walked back into the lobby, still not wearing my shoes. I don't know what I was thinking. I was out of it. I was a zombie walking through the Regency Hotel. My hair was disheveled. My beard was a mess. My face had lines on it from too much sleep. I walked into the elevator, and there was a young man in the elevator, and he looked at me. And I could only describe his face as a face of sympathy. He reached into his wallet before he got off that elevator onto his floor, and he handed me a $10 bill, and he said, it's going to get better, old man. God bless you. And he walked away. Ten dollars. I got ten dollars out of the deal. I am not complaining. That weekend, the choral competition was in full swing. There were children walking all around that hotel, adolescents, dressed in glitter and spandex and hosiery. I remember the days when the only costumes that a choral group would wear would be khakis and white button-down shirts, but these kids were wearing costumes. I saw a group of teenagers strolling through the lobby wearing black and white striped prison outfits. <laughs> they were going to be doing a rendition of Jailhouse Rock by Elvis Presley. I tuned in and watched their performance in the auditorium, and they weren't bad. They weren't bad at all. There was a group of kids dressed like cowboys, they all had cowboy hats on and lassos attached to their belts and shiny belt buckles the size of serving platters and red shiny boots. They were good. I watched them sing a medley of songs. In downtown Montgomery, there was rain. The rain was falling like, like soft sheets upon the city. It was a, a light drizzle. It turned the pavement into a shiny, reflective surface, reflecting the traffic lights and the red and white blinking lights of the city. It was raining all over the statue of Hank Williams, which sits downtown, overlooking the capital city of the South. There were teenagers posing in front of the statue to get their picture made. They had their arms around each other, and they were screaming, War Eagle. <laughs> group of passerbyers, older passerbyers with white hair and much more wisdom screamed, Roll Tide. <laughs> I went to visit the grave of Hank Williams today. That was something else, especially in the rain. The sky had a gray, overcast, brooding look to it. Hank Williams wrote my favorite song, I Saw the light. And I don't know whether it's a true story or not, but I met an old man named Billy. And Mr. Billy was a guitar player who had played with Hank Williams on a few occasions in the great city of Montgomery for a radio special. And he asked Hank how he'd come to write that song. And Hank said it was some drinking involved. And Hank Williams was at the airport getting ready to hop on a plane. And, and while he was watching out the window, uh, the plane making its descent onto the runway, there was a large landing light shining right at him, and he pinned the words, I saw the light. That's what I hear. I don't know if that's true or not. All I do know is that that song was the anthem of my childhood along with every other song from the Hank Williams catalog. My father had a Philco radio, which sat on his workbench. And while he would change the oil underneath his car with that shop light hanging from the axle, casting a dim orange light over everything underneath that car, 
while he would unscrew the, the drain plug that would drain the belly pan. My father would listen to the words which came out of that Philco radio. Words like, I got a feeling called the blues, oh Lord, since my baby said goodbye. And he would listen to Hank Williams yodel, yodel. My father asked me if I knew how to yodel. I said, no, sir. He said, you need to work on that. It's a dying art. You got to teach yourself to yodel. I locked myself in my room and I played my guitar and I practiced yodeling. The sounds that were coming from behind my closed door sounded like a bloodhound with a chest cold. But eventually, I did learn how to yodel. And I would sing. Well, she's in love. And my mother would say, if you keep singing like that, your voice is going to stick that way. I visited the grave of Hank Williams, his concrete Stetson, along with musical notes and They call him Luke the Drifter still, even upon his death. Possibly my favorite album of all time. My father handed that to me. It was a large album with a portrait of Hank Williams on the front that said Luke the Drifter. They were stories. They weren't just songs. They were stories and recitations from the old time radio days. And this is what I wanted to do with my life at that age. I wanted to tell stories preferably on the radio. I wanted to sing music. I wanted to yodel. I wanted to wear my Stetson cowboy hat. I wanted to do this. I didn't care for the music that was coming out of Nashville. I was like my father in that regard. He would turn the radio up for Willie Nelson. He would turn the radio down for Barbara Mandrell. He would turn the radio up for Hank Williams, and he would turn the radio down for Kenny Rogers. He would turn the radio up for Ernest Tubb or Lefty Frizzell. He would turn the radio up for Merle Haggard. And he would turn the radio off for John Denver, (laughs) my father. At the graveside of Hank Williams, I swear I could almost feel his ghost. There was a choral group, some of the same kids who were who were at the Regency Hotel, they were standing in front of Hank's grave and they were singing a choral rendition of I Saw the Light for a person holding the cell phone. The person holding the camera was squatted down onto their heels and they were aiming this camera at their friends and the kids sang. There were a few of us watching these kids sing in that light drizzle. And among the people watching was a a young boy with Down syndrome. This young boy came up to my waist, and he stood with a mouth that was open and eyes that were intent and fixed on those high schoolers who were singing. And he whispered to the man who was with him, that girl with the black hair is pretty. And we watched until they finished and sang the last verse. And a few of us who were watching clapped and applauded them, and they left and I got to talking to this child who was a radiant child with a, with a face like sunshine. And I talked to the man who was with him. The man was tall and slender with white hair. He said, that boy's mama was a friend of my sister's. She got rid of him when he was a baby. My wife and I told that judge, he needs us. Give us the chance. We can love that baby like he needs. The judge did give them a chance. and They took that child home even though they already raised two of their own and they were everything that baby needed and they still are. And that kid has grown up doing fun things like visiting the graves of American icons such as Hank Williams. Montgomery, Alabama is also the home to one of my favorites, Nat King Cole. Nat King Cole, he was among the Christmas collection of songs which my father would play, which included Bing Crosby and Dean Martin, Johnny Mathis. Later on in my life, I explored Nat King Cole's music. His, his swinging piano rhythms were intoxicating. The way he could play 
with only a few notes and make that song feel like it was moving you forward through space and time. A genius mind for playing the piano in such a swinging, hard, bopping way that would drive the listener forward into the kind of state where you would nod your head and snap your fingers on two and four. He was a brilliant lyricist. A buzzard took a monkey for a ride in the air and the monkey thought that everything was on the square. The buzzard tried to throw the monkey off his back and the monkey grabbed a hold and said, now listen, Jack, straighten up and fly right. The buzzer told the monkey that you're choking me. Won't you release your hold and I will set you free? The monkey looked the buzzer right dead in the eye and said, your story sounds so touching, but it sounds just like a lie. <laughs> Straighten up and fly right. I went to the Nat King Cole mural on Maxwell Boulevard. I looked at the colorful blues and oranges and greens painted on the brick wall which depicted parts of Nat's life. The old advertisements of him advertising Alaga syrup. The advertisement reads, Nat King Cole says, I was raised on Alaga syrup, ribbon cane syrup. It's a kind of syrup that you just can't get anymore at the grocery store. It's nothing like these godless atrocities they call syrup these days, Aunt Jemima and Mrs. Butterworth. Nat King Cole was born over on St. John Street, and they say he moved to Chicago when he was four, where he proceeded to change the rest of the musical world forever. At the mural, I met a young couple, a young couple from North Carolina. They had big cameras on their shoulders, and they were aiming them at the, the colorful painted wall. The girl was friendly, and so was the boy. They looked college age, maybe early 20s maybe even younger. They told me their story. They're wedding photographers, mostly. They met each other when they were in art school, and they wanted to get married, and their parents refused. Still, they planned the wedding anyway, and they were going to pay for it themselves. They had the photographer booked. They had the florist, the preacher, the top 40 dance band, the caterer, and her mother refused to attend. So the girl told me, we decided to cancel. We decided to call it off. We figured, why waste the money? Why not just put it in savings? So they did a courthouse wedding. Only a few people attended, and they sank their money into savings, and they bought photography equipment, and they started a business. And in the first year, business was booming. They were traveling all over the southeast just to take pictures. It was a dream come true. Life has treated them kindly. And now, she says, touching her belly, they just found out they have a small photographer on the way. My hotel maid at the Regency Inn was named Lakina. Everything she says is laced with humor, and she laughs at her own jokes, and I laugh with her, not necessarily at her jokes, but at the way she laughs. It's beautiful, and she looks at life in a beautiful way. I asked her where I could find some barbecue. She said, well, you got your dreamland downtown, but that stuff ain't no good. It's too dry. It ain't real barbecue. And she told me about K and J Rib Shack, K and J Rib Shack, and she was right about K&J Rib Shack. The ribs were fall off the bone good. The sides were good enough to make your granny get hot and sweaty. <laughs> I remember my granny's side dishes when she would cook. They were, they were the stars of the meal. The main course took a back seat to her creamed corn, which was made with enough butter to make a cardiologist nervous. And the things she called collard greens weren't collard greens at all. They were ham hocks seasoned with a few little green flecks. <laughs> K&J lived up to its reputation. Lakina was going to choir practice the night that I met her. Choir practice. She was going to be taking her son with her. Her son, doctors have just told her, is going deaf. They say he might lose his hearing in another year or two. Lakina tells me, I take my boy to choir because I want him to learn all the good songs before he can't hear nothing no more. 
She herself has been singing since she was a nine-year-old. And she hums a few bars for me. I am weak, but thou art strong. Save me, Jesus, from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk, Lord, close to thee. And you can tell right away she's got the pipes that only time and experience can make. I went back downtown after dinner. My wife and I ate an early dinner in the room. I had the chicken and it had Koneka sausage in it. You could cook me up a patch of shoe leather and put Koneka sausage in it and I would eat it and I would bless you for it. I love Koneka sausage. I have visited the Koneka sausage factory on a few occasions. I bought myself a baseball cap and when I checked out, the cashier said that'll be $40. It was highway robbery, but I don't mind being robbed by the Koneka sausage corporation. After supper, I walked downtown and I went to the statue one more time and I looked at Hank Williams. I doubt he saw me. He was too busy overlooking Montgomery. The city was beautiful. His city. His museum was just a little ways away and it, it holds the car, the Cadillac that he died in. A big wooden Indian named Kalaja. I bet Hank sees a lot from that platform where he stands down there by the river. I bet he sees people, people who pose for their pictures in front of him. I bet he sees people who feel like they're overlooked, people like hotel maids named Lakina, people like young photographers who believe in their love so much they got to fight for it. People like boys who have grown into men who remember things about their fathers like Philco radios and changing the oil on a Ford truck with their daddy. And little boys, little boys who visit the grave sites of American icons like Hank Williams. That boy with Down syndrome asked me, he said, what's your favorite song? And he said it with labored speech and a sincerity that is unmatched. He had a face like a sunrise and a smile that could warm up a space faster than a propane heater. I said, why, that's easy. While we both looked at the grave of an American icon. I said, my favorite song is I Saw the Light. He said, why? Well, that's because today in Montgomery, Alabama, while wandering the town, I saw it bright and clear in people. I saw it. I saw the light. Thanks for listening to Sean of the South. I've been your host, Sean Dietrich. It has been a real pleasure. Hope you join us next week. That music you heard behind me today are the high beams. Howard Walford, Brett Billings, Ben O'Connor, Damon Smith, and Greg Shockett. Check out their music on iTunes and any other outlet you can think of online or visit their website at highbeams.com. Find anything more about what I do, you can visit seanofthesouth.com. And while you're there, I hope you drop me a line because I love to hear my friends. And speaking of friends, friends, just accept some days you are the pigeon and some days you are the statue adios